Yay Networks. Hi there, I'm Mia Sanchez, and you may recognize me as Miss USA and first runner-up at Miss Universe. Well, there is so much more to me than the sash, the crown, the dresses, the chicken cutlets, and the butt glue. Yep, that's a real thing, and we'll get into that later. I am a fourth degree black belt, a women's self-defense instructor, a mother, and a wife to my amazing co-host, Daniel Bucco. We are keeping it real as we dig into relationships, parenting, confidence, self-defense, travel, all the joys and struggles that come with living this beautiful thing we call life. So pull up a chair and throw your hair in a messy bun as we chat with all types of life experts. So make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and look out for Hold My Crown wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Hold My Crown podcast. We are on episode six. Oh my goodness, time is flying. Thank you so much for all of your love and support. It's so fun to see all the tags and the shares, and it means the world to me, so I really appreciate it. And today, we are going to have a very special Miss guest, Miss Someone. You probably already know if you saw the title of the episode, but before we meet our very special guest, I have a few fun facts about Miss USA that I'm going to share with you today. All right, so let's do this. Fun facts about Miss USA to start our day today, and then we will get right on in to the conversation with our guests. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. All righty, fun facts about Miss USA. The Miss USA pageant was conceived in 1950 when, I feel really bad. I don't even know how to say your name. I should have looked this up. Yolande, maybe, uh, was the winner of Miss America, but she refused to pose publicly in a bikini for the swimsuit sponsor who, you know, they were like, we're the sponsor. You got to pose in a swimsuit. She was like, nope, that's not for me. So the whole company pulled out of the Miss America organization. And that is when the Miss USA and Miss Universe organization was first thought of. So the first Miss USA pageant was held in 1952. Myrna Hansen, who was crowned at 17 years old, was the youngest winner, and that was 1953, so the year after the pageant started. Marion Stevenson was the first Miss USA to win Miss Universe in 1954. We are setting all these records right off the bat. First pageant, 1952. The youngest title holder, 1953. The first Miss USA to win Universe, 1954. Look at USA. We kill in it. Um, since then, there have been or a total of now nine USA title holders to win Miss Universe. I believe Miss USA has the highest amount of wins with Venezuela right on our tail at seven or eight. All the pageant fans out there, you will be able to correct me. I know you guys know your facts. Let's see. More fun facts. Miss USA 2015, Olivia Jordan of Oklahoma was the only Miss USA winner to compete at two major international pageants. I remember watching her, I believe in that red dress, compete, I believe it was Miss International, correct me if I'm wrong, and then again at Miss Universe, and she just killed it both times. Oh, it was Miss World. Okay, there we go. She competed at Miss World. That's incredible. That's huge. The tallest Miss USA was Miss USA 2012, Nana Merriweather. I actually was first runner up to Nana Merriweather a year or two before that, 2011, 2010, at the Miss Los Angeles pageant. So she was going to school in California. We competed in LA, the Miss Los Angeles pageant. She won. I was her first runner up. Then cut to a year or two later and she wins. Well, she was crowned Miss USA after Olivia Colpo was crowned Miss Universe. More fun facts about all of our amazing Miss USAs. Our very first Asian Miss USA was crowned in 1962. And then we also have Arwini, who is a Filipina American, who was crowned, hello, last year. And she was an amazing Miss USA who went on to win Miss Universe. Um, Carol Gist was the first Black Miss USA in 1990. Let me tell you guys. I'm obsessed with her. She was the first Black Miss USA. She was Miss USA who went on to get first runner up at Miss Universe. There's so many ways that I feel like I connect with her. She was crowned in 1990. I was born in 1990. She wore red, I believe when she won and when she competed at Universe. And she got first runner up at Miss Universe. And I got first runner up at Miss Universe. And she was also my judge when I was competing for Miss USA. So I just feel like 
we're soul sisters. I just love her so much. And I've seen her many a times over the years at the Miss USA and Miss Universe pageants. And she is an incredible human being. Um, she was from Michigan as well. And Daniel is from Michigan. So, so many fun ways that I connect to Carol, my Miss USA sister. And then there have been a total of 12 Black Miss USAs. And then we have had four Latina Miss USAs, including myself and my very good friend, Susie Castillo. Up until now, where we have Noelia, who is in another, who is another amazing Latina Miss USA. She is of Venezuelan descent. Some of my favorite people are Venezuelan, but I have to be careful, you guys, because if I say that, all my other favorite people are gonna be like, what about me? I thought you said you love Filipino pageant fans. Yes, I love all of the pageant fans. I was roommates with a Miss Universe from Venezuela, and one of my very best friends from my pageant when I competed was Miguelis. So she was also Miss Venezuela, for those of you who don't know. So that's why I have like this special place in my heart for my Venezuelan sisters. All right, let's take a little break. And then when we come back, you guys will meet our amazing Miss USA, Noelia. Welcome back from the break, you guys. We have the incredible Miss USA 2023 and 2024 because your year is into 2024. <laughs> Noelia here with us. I am so excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I would like to take one little moment to let you give us the intro of who you are because you are phenomenal. You are an author. You are a speaker. You are our Miss USA. You competed at Miss Universe. So give me like the main bullet points of what you want people to know about you. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. But I suppose main bullet points are I'm 24 years old. I was born and raised in Florida. After I graduated from high school, I moved to Alabama where I competed in, in the Alabama pageant system. And then I moved to Utah, won Miss Utah USA, and then of course went on to win Miss USA representing the state of Utah. I uh, have a background in real estate and property management and interior design. I haven't quite finished my interior design school yet. I can dive into that a little later on, but that's kind of my professional background. And then my advocacies are um, anti-bullying. I authored an anti-bullying children's book. I also advocate for teen dating violence awareness and prevention through the One Love Foundation. I've done that for seven years. And then being the first Venezuelan American woman to be crowned Miss USA. Um, I know it's so exciting. I um, also advocate for immigration rights and reform because of course my mom is you know an immigrant to this country and so much of her family that are now in the united states also immigrated and um you know i've had family members recently you know in recent years immigrate here and so we've gotten to see firsthand how the process has gotten to be so different from when my mom came here versus just when my cousin came here a few years ago because now there's more of a crisis um yeah. and i just think that there needs to be a little bit more reform surrounding that. So I guess that's kind of the synopsis of who I am and what I do. You are incredible. And I love oh, all yeah. that you're advocating for. And I, I don't know if we have time to dive into all of it today. Cause I'm like, tell me more <laughs> about like the teen dating and like your work there. Yeah. There's so much, but this is not necessarily a pageant interview. We will be talking okay. about pageant things. Yeah. Um, but also feel free to be like, yeah, I want to talk about X, Y, and Z, and we can dive into that as well. Sure. I wanted to share with you first a little fun memory that I think I've already mentioned to you once or twice, but I I had some babies. I had lots of babies in the last two years. I and so, so many. I feel like Daniel always jokes. He's like, we have 17 children. I'm like, well, three, but it feels like 17 sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um. So when I was watching all the preparations for Miss USA this year, just via my phone and social media. And I think I had had the babies like right around the same time that the pageant was happening. I didn't get to attend. Um, oh, I was supposed to judge, right? And I had COVID, all the things. Okay, there was so much going on. Um, you were the only title holder out of all the other girls that I reached out to, to be like, hey, good luck. You're incredible. And normally, I love connecting with as many girls as I can because there's so many incredible women competing for the title, but you're literally the only one. That oh I my gosh. Out. I was like, I knew it. But obviously, you know, it's, that's it's, crazy. It's I, 
Yeah. Oh, have I not? I didn't know that. I, oh, I'm so happy that you shared that because I, um, I really have always looked up to you. And when I got the Instagram notification on my phone, that was like Mia Sanchez Buco, like that I had a message from you. I was like, yeah. what? And so I opened it and I obviously, you know, didn't know if you had message anybody else. So I didn't like tell anybody just because I didn't yeah. want for anyone to like feel bad if they wanted to get yeah. one, or whatever. So yeah. I just, I kept it to myself, but I was so honored and I believe I texted my pageant coach and I was like, Nia Sanchez just messaged me. I'm freaking out. And, um, you know, it, it really did give me like a boost. It gave mm. me a boost. I was like, Oh, period. Like Nia Sanchez just messaged me. I've like, I can totally do this. You know, imposter syndrome is a very real thing. And mm -hmm. when you get to Miss USA, like deep down, you know, all the hard work that you put in to get there. And obviously you have to yeah. win your state first. So, you know, on some level, like you deserve to be there. You were chosen, yeah. but sometimes it's hard. You see all these other girls and they're also accomplished too. And that's something mm -hmm. that I always celebrate, but it can certainly make you feel sometimes like, well, you know, so-and-so has this degree and like, I don't have that degree, like whatever, and, right. you know, in, in a competition setting, you just truly don't know what they're looking for. But when you mm -hmm. messaged me, I was like, you know what, if Nia can see something in me and we haven't ever like met or spoken before, then like, I need to, you know, really, I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Give myself like the, the confidence boost that I've always needed myself. Yeah. Like if someone oh, else, I, that. Did, yeah. like, I need to see it too. Yeah, um, I love that you said that. I had moments like that too when I was competing, where it's like you've done all the hard work and your your headspace and like mm -hmm. all the physical preparation, and you know that you're incredible and you're ready to be the title holder if they choose you. But yeah. there's those little moments yeah. that kind of creep in, and so sometimes it just takes an extra word of encouragement, whether it's from me or somebody else. It just gives you that extra boost. Hundred um, percent. I do want this podcast to be a place where people feel like they get takeaways. So maybe mm -hmm. someone's listening and they're a competitor or they're a friend of a competitor yeah. and they just send that competitor a message or my, a lot of my friends literally wrote handwritten like cards and they slipped them into my luggage. My girlfriends, not even, oh, Daniel sweet. did it. Too, but little envelopes with like Bible verses or encouraging phrases that I would just like discover throughout my time competing. Oh my so God, I love that you shared that, yes, of course you did all the hard work, but little encouraging <laughs> moments for people definitely helped too. And it helped me as of well. Course. So if you are a supporter of a contestant and you're listening, encourage your person that you're cheering for in different ways because it definitely helps them. 100%. Um, and, and the thing is, is you never really know the headspace that the person you're supporting is in while they're there because you're so busy. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to like stay in touch with your friends and family throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And so to find those messages of encouragement, you might just find them or receive them in a moment that you were really needing it. And the people who gave it yep. to you like didn't even realize it. So 100%, yeah. if you can send the messages, do. I love it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We have so much to talk about. Yes. So much to talk about. And we may have to do a part two of this podcast, like do another interview at some other point totally. because we can't cover all the amazingness that <laughs> creates you and who you are, but let's dive into a few questions that I prepared. And then we have questions from the audience that they want to know about you as well. Um, all right. Why, why pageants? Why did you start as a teen? Have you always wanted to do pageants? Why the USA system? Like what got you into the pageant world and why do you love it? Tell me all about it. Yeah, I had always wanted to do pageants since I was little, not, mm -hmm. you know, as like a toddler, but I would say around the age of like eight, nine, 10, I really wanted to try. And to be honest, it was because a little bit of like seeing toddlers and tiaras on TV. And yeah. then it was also a little bit of like, my mom, obviously being from Venezuela, pageants are a mm -hmm. huge deal in that country. And yeah. so I grew up watching it with my mom and my aunt. Um, so I think seeing those two things and seeing how it would apply to me as like a younger person, obviously at eight, nine, 10 years old, you're not on the Miss Universe stage. I yeah. just always wanted to kind of like dip my toes in and see what it was like. I was really shy as yeah. a kid. So for me, it was like, I want to do this. And I recognize that I'm going to have to push myself out of my comfort zone, but I wanted to do it so bad that I almost didn't care. And I asked my mom and she said, no, 
like for years. And it wasn't until really? I was like, being yeah. a Venezuelan woman, she said no. I know. She said no. And when she talks about it now, she says that it was because she didn't want me to do the toddlers and tiaras type pageants. She didn't mm-hmm. want for me to have this perception of myself at that young of an age, mm-hmm. thinking that only my physical beauty would make me win this like prize, which in hindsight, I a hundred percent understand where she was coming from as a mom and like agree with her. Um, you know, I have nothing against people that go and do that stuff. You know, every child is different and their personalities are different. And maybe at that young of an age, they're able to kind of have this wall in their mind between like, I realized that I didn't win this pageant. It has nothing to do with me, but I don't think my mom knew how I would respond because I had always Mm -hmm. played sports like team sports. So Mm -hmm. if my team lost, it was like something that we all rallied together and we practice Mm -hmm. and we get better, but I don't think she knew how I would respond by myself. So, um, when I was 16, I got a letter in the mail from like NAM, I think. I don't even know mm-hmm. how they got my information or the address to my house. They get everybody's they information. I love yeah, NAM. <laughs> I have no idea how they did that, but I got a letter yeah. in the mail and I was writing through it and I said, oh my gosh, mom, like, can I, can we please just try? They were, they were promoting and advertising this sort of like a scouting or casting or informational session at a hotel mm-hmm. in my hometown. And so my mom was like, okay, fine. Like you're old enough now. Let's, let's go take you to this thing. So I went and I didn't sign up to be in the pageant that year. I just really wanted to learn about it and like kind of decide. And we decided not to, but I wanted to research like other pageants that existed. So I, you know, went on Google, start clicking around, whatever. And I find the USA system and I Mm -hmm. see the page for Miss Florida Teen USA. And, you know, there's a video of the teen queen at the time, you know, her crowning. And I just remember looking at it and being like, this is the, this is the one time I get to try and do this. Like I, I'm not backing down from this dream that I have. And I called my mom on the phone, like while I have my laptop open in front of me, I'm watching this video of this girl's crowning moment. And I said to my mom, like, why don't you support me in this? Like, I just let me try it one time. And if if it doesn't work out, then like, fine, we'll never have to do it again. But I just want to do it. And she said, okay, fine. You still want to do it. So get your information like, let's talk about it. So um, there was a part of the page where it directed me to the local director that at the time, Florida still did like prelim pageants. And Mm -hmm. I set up a meeting with the prelim director. And she said to me, yeah, let's go meet at a Starbucks. Um, I'll, you know, go over everything with you. We can figure out if you want to enter into Miss Sarasota Teen USA. So my mom and I went and met her at the Starbucks. She kind of explained to my mom that USA system is, um, you know, they, they think that philanthropy is really important. I would have to be involved in the community. And my mom really liked that part of it. Mm-hmm. And she said, okay, fine. Well, if, if that's kind of what you'll be doing and you really want to try it, like, let's go ahead and get you signed up. So I signed up and I competed and I won. So that was like my prelim pageant. There was only eight girls. It was not big. Um, Girl, but- still won. <laughs> I, know. I, did. I, I, I was so excited and like shocked. I, I wasn't sure if I thought that I had it in me, to be honest. And the night before the pageant, I was like in my swimsuit. Cause again, this is the time that I guess there was also still swimsuit for teen. I was yep. in my swimsuit. I had my heels on. I was practicing walking in my house, but I had never had formal pageant training before. Like my mom used to model in Venezuela in her twenties. And so she was trying to teach me that, but it was funny Because when she was modeling, it was very much like the uh, 90s kind of, uh, you know, when the models would get to the end of the runway and then they would like kick their foot out and like almost make a circle and then go Mm -hmm. back. It was like a very dated way of teaching me how to walk, but that's what she was teaching me. And um, it was funny. She was doing her best to make sure that like I felt like I knew what I was doing. I and love that. sweet yeah, mama. I love her mom. She was. She was. And yeah. I think once she kind of started to see me like practicing walking and things like that, she got really excited and kind of into it. Yeah. And then um, you know, after I won, I 
I just was so proud looking at like my, my sash. And I went to my bedroom and I like hung it up on my headboard. And my mom came into my room and she got really emotional seeing that because that was actually things I had watched like on toddlers and tiaras growing up was like the girls when they would have like, all their sashes hung up in their room. Yeah. And it was like finally my moment eight years later of, of having that. And we didn't know it at the time, but then I had to get ready for Miss Florida Teen USA. Like I knew I was competing for my local, but we right. didn't really understand that, you know, just a few short months later, I would have to be competing at the state level. So there was a woman that was in the crowd of that prelim pageant that unbeknownst to me was a prelim director in Texas. Oh. Um, she didn't live in Texas anymore. She had been the director for like Corpus Christi and San Antonio. And mm -hmm. she didn't do it anymore because she was dealing with um, cancer. And her husband was a doctor that worked in Sarasota. So she lived there with him and, you know, she was undergoing treatment, but she had a mutual friend with my mom and she reached out to them and was like, can you connect me with this girl? I really want to work with her. So my mom got in contact with her and, you know, they were talking and my mom said, well, thank you so much. Like, you know, this means a lot, but I don't know that we can like pay you. Like, I don't know what your rate is. And she was like, no, no, no. I want to work with Noelia for free. Like, wow. I see, like I see something in her, like she has really good potential. And my mom was wow. like, okay, sure. So at the time I actually um, was homeschooled in my last two years of high school, I decided to homeschool. And so I would spend like all day at this woman's house training with her. And because she had that background in Texas, and I mean, we know how the Texas Queens train, um, mm -hmm. it was intense, but I enjoyed every second of it. And she even brought her son out to Florida from Texas. And he was teaching me like walking and we practiced interview and all this stuff. So mm -hmm. I went to compete at Florida Teen USA my first time and I was fourth runner up. And I couldn't believe it. Like when they called me into the top five, I literally was crying Aww. because I didn't think <laughs> that I would even like place, let alone make top five. So I was just so happy mm -hmm. to be there. And, um, you know, after the pageant was done, I just was like, okay, next year, like, let's do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. And I think my family wasn't sure how I was going to respond to, you know, being in the top five, but not winning. And yeah they were like, are you okay? Like they were kind of like tiptoeing a little bit. And I was like, I feel great. Like, I'm so excited right now. You have no idea. I exceeded my expectations. I'm just ready to get started for next year. Like every day yeah. of this pageant, I'm just grinding. And that's pretty much what I did. I was in the gym like once or twice a day. That's not necessary. But the thing is, is I was um, coming out of being a volleyball athlete for nine years. So yeah. I um, had to switch up my workout regimen because um, volleyball training is very different than I suppose training to be like on a stage. But um, right. you know, my lifestyle. And you're as an athlete, you're like, it feels good to work out. That's yeah. what you know. Like yes. that motivation, I'm sure. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And um, that was the year that it shifted then from swimsuit to activewear. Mm -hmm. So you know, what, what I, my goals were a little bit different in that sense for that part of the competition. And, uh, you know, I went back the next year and I placed first runner up and I was really, really proud of myself oh, yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. Hello. That, that was the year that, um, the Chris Lee family took over the Florida USA franchise. So, mm -hmm when they were announced as the new directors, the number of contestants like doubled. When I wow. competed the first year, there was, I think like 46 or like 49 girls or something around that. And then the, the following year, when I got first runner up, there was 89 contestants. Incredible. And you still so, and you got first runner up, please better. And there was double the girls. That's yeah. amazing. I just think, um, you know, my, my mindset at that point was different. I had gotten my toes in the water, kind of understood mm -hmm. more so what it was like and went off of that knowledge and then kind of like shifted my strategy. And I did continue yeah. to work with um, that coach and her name was Juanita. 
And then, um, unfortunately, like a few months before the pageant, she went on a vacation with her husband to Puerto Rico because that's where she was from. Mm -hmm. And um, she was in remission for cancer at the time, but then she suffered a stroke while she was in Puerto Rico. And unfortunately, she passed away while she was there. So Mm -hmm. I was devastated, (laughs) completely devastated that... um, that that happened. And I actually didn't know that she passed away until like two or three days later because it was, it came up like on Facebook and I didn't, I didn't check Facebook very much at the time. And my mom got a phone call from somebody that was like, I just saw this on Facebook. Is this true? And my mom comes into the house and she tells me to like open my phone and we're looking. And then we saw the picture, um, you know, of like the announcement that she had passed and it was really sad. We we tried to make it to Puerto Rico for the funeral, but it was like so mm-hmm. last second that we just we couldn't yeah. make it there. Um, but sometimes now, like I look back on my whole entire journey and now that I've won Miss USA and I just think like I'm so grateful that she played a role in my journey because yeah. she saw something in me so early on, like when I didn't know what I was doing that Mm. I certainly didn't see in myself. And she took the time and energy to invest in me. And um, that means a lot to me. And I will never, ever, 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 ever forget her and her son and her family. And after I won Miss USA, her son messaged me and was like, see, like we told you. And um, yeah, I know, I know it was really sweet. And um, so after she passed away, I ended up, you know, continuing to train for that year of Miss Florida Teen USA. And I ended up working with like PR pageant coaches, Jules Meyer yes. and that whole team. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, so then from that point on, Jules has been my coach through yeah. every other pageant that I've done. And I've done so many. Literally, we could be here like for hours, me telling you about every pageant I've done. But yeah. those uh, those first few pageants were huge for me in learning and understanding like this is really what I want to do. And yes, I'm going to continue to compete as a miss because I want to get to Miss USA. Um, Unfortunately, the year that I got first runner up in teen, I aged out. So I I didn't Mm -hmm. make it to Miss Teen USA, but I believe things happen for a reason. So um, looking back on it, like I wouldn't change my journey for anything. Yeah. I mean, you, we were kind of talking before you placed first runner up three times total. Does that include your teen or three times yes. in the Miss Division? So okay. once, once in teen that one time and then twice at Miss Alabama USA. Yeah. I need to know though, like your headspace, because I feel like I'm sure there's people listening that have been in the top five or placed first yeah. runner up. Mm-hmm. I don't know how, I mean, I played a second run up and I came back at California. So I understand like you're so close and you still want to compete, but like, how did you place first run up twice? And then be like, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to keep competing. But did you have a moment where you're like, mm, I'm done. And then you kind of decided, no, I, I think I could give it another try. Like where was your head at? And, um, I want to ask you that. And then I want to know like what your goals are for Miss USA and after, and then yeah. we have to get into the pageant question. All, all the people that want to know. Yes, yes. So yes, what was what went through your head? Whether it was yeah. like a variety of emotions or just you were so focused, where were you at? I was very focused. And like fundamentally, I believe that things happen for a reason and timing is everything. And mm. like in your case, Nia, like imagine if you had won California that year that you got second runner up. Like it's very yeah. possible that – you know, you could have gotten to Miss USA and they could have been looking at or for someone I would have been eaten alive. That's why I tell people <laughs> all the time. I'm like, if I would have won at 19 years old and oh gone to Miss USA, I would have had no deep rooted self-confidence. It took a while for that to develop in me. And so I agree with you. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And it's so hard to see in the moment sometimes. But yeah. when you zoom out, you're like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't win. Yeah, that time because I was supposed to win. Thousand percent, one thousand percent, and I know that for some people, you know, for them, hearing things happen for a reason. Sometimes for them, it's not very helpful. Like they just want to right. feel what it's, you know, grieve. I guess you know that that experience, yeah, um, and that you didn't win when you were really hoping that you would. But 
I can firmly say that once you reach that point mentally where you just believe it, you don't have to Mm -hmm. tell yourself that you just believe it. You'll have like a whole new sense of peace. And I wish that everybody would have that because I, I feel sad when I see other girls be really, really upset when they don't win, because I don't, I don't know where that sadness comes from. I'm not, you know, interrogating them, but I know for some people it's a sadness of, I really wanted it. I worked so hard and it's like, I get it. Like I've been there. I I haven't been so upset to the point of like tears before, but I think it's because growing up as an athlete, you just have to understand that like loss kind of comes with the territory. You won't Mm -hmm. always win every single time. And all you can do is view it as like a learning experience and see, Mm -hmm. you know, go back and watch your performance and, think about how, how can I improve? And then you come back the following year, even stronger. And the fact that you have a whole year to improve, that's a lot of time. And a lot of growth happens in that time. And I'm very, very grateful that I did not win Miss Alabama USA the first year. Um, You know, obviously because I was first runner up, I felt this sense of like, I was, I was honored that if for whatever reason, Caitlin, that Miss Alabama USA that won that year couldn't make it to Miss USA, that they trusted me to go ahead and do that. But at the same time, it was kind of like, okay, there must have been a reason why they thought Mm -hmm. she was more ready than me. And that's okay. Like, let me go ahead and re-strategize or, um, you know, just refocus on certain things. And then I, when I went back the second year and I was standing there holding hands with uh, Sophie, who's the current Miss Alabama mm-hmm. USA, I just was thinking, uh, you know, don't, don't be upset if your name isn't called right now mm-hmm. because it wouldn't, you know, it, I, I wasn't the first contestant, especially at Miss Alabama USA to be first runner up twice in a row. And so holding hands there, I just knew like it was a possibility. (laughs) I, I didn't know how anybody else's private interview went. I'm not watching every girl's performance while they're on stage. So truly when I was standing there holding hands, like I did not know which one of us was going to win. And Mm -hmm. when they called her as the winner, of course I had that moment of like, oh dang, like you're so close again. But then as soon as I left Auburn that weekend, I'm sitting in the passenger seat of my car and my mom is driving and I'm like, all right, I have to start thinking of like my plan for next year and what am I going to do to improve? And mm-hmm. I fully planned on coming back to Alabama USA that next year. Like I wasn't even back to my apartment yet in Birmingham and I was already thinking about the following year. Game plan. I love yes. it. Yes. Because time is kind of of the es- of is of the mm-hmm. essence, and if you think about it, um, you know, kind of what what's going on right now with the state pageants for USA, the dates mm-hmm. are finally being announced, and they're not really around the same time as they were the last year. Mm-hmm. And there's always that possibility that your state pageant is going to be scheduled for less than a year out. So like yep. you have to stay ready kind of. And yep. um, man, I have really- clients that like have been working already. They're like, mm-hmm. I don't, my pageant, their pageant is not even announced and they are in the gym. Yeah. They've been in the gym for the last year. They know Just that again. this is their year to compete. So it's like, 100%. I love that you have that focus and that dedication. And you know, like no matter when the pageant is, I'm going to be ready for it because that's yeah. like, that's your athlete and like your focus mentality. I love that so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do want to ask you one more question before we get into the, the fan question. Yes. Um, so obviously we're not going to get into all the details because I don't, I don't know all the details. And I feel like I should probably have like a whole podcast interview with Layla to like figure out what her entire plan is for the Miss USA organization. I'm sure it's grand, Mm -hmm. but where Mm -hmm. you're at right now, um, Every, it seems like everything is just getting started. There's mm-hmm. been state, like state pageants announced. Like it feels like the ball is finally getting rolling, and I'm so yes. excited for that and mm-hmm. excited for you. So between now and whenever you are giving up your title, whenever the next Miss USA pageant is, mm-hmm. what are your plans and what are your plans for after Miss USA? So before we get that answer to what you want to do this year and what you want to do after your Miss USA year, let's take a quick little break and we'll be right back. Guys, so 
glad you're here with us. We have two more questions to wrap up my questions for Noelia, and then we get to your questions that you guys submitted on Instagram. So those questions, again, one more time, Noelia, what is your goal for this year? Like what, give me one or two things that you're really looking forward to or that you want to do during your year as Miss USA. And then what, and you don't have to have an answer for this. It's not like, oh, you should have the rest of your life planned out, but do you have an idea of what you should do after Miss USA? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to have an answer, but if you have an idea, let us know. Of course. So, oh my gosh, from now until I give up my title, um, there's a lot of things that are being planned that I'm really excited about. I, of course, want to continue to um, advocate for my social causes a lot on social media. Um, So definitely be on the lookout for that. And then... um, as far as like, you know, planting seeds for the future as Miss USA right now and things that I can do later on, I really want to kind of dip my toes in the water with hosting. I really like talking with people. And um, the funny thing is, is people have always asked me, oh, would you be interested in being like an actress or something? And my mom put me in acting when I was younger. Unfortunately, I can't take myself seriously in like... I'm- in I understand. I'm the same. In a film setting, like I can't. Maybe if it's like a comedy, um, or maybe if it's like a commercial or something where I have a script and some maybe, but uh, I don't know what it is. I just can't take myself seriously. Um, yeah. modeling I think would be really fun. Um, something that has been weirdly enough, a very like hot topic about me as Miss USA is what my height is because I'm not the tallest contestant. How tall are you? Tell me. I am like, okay, I'm five, four and a half. Okay. At the doctor's office? Are you five, four and a half at the doctor's office? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. At the doctor's office. So I love it because the- you, not that anybody carries themselves short or tall or whatever, but you just have this like beautiful presence where it doesn't oh, matter your height. You. I, I, okay. So yes, you were talking about modeling and your height. Okay. <laughs> so I, I always thought, oh my gosh, well, I'm, I'm too short to do any kind of like runway modeling. And someone recently mm-hmm. said to me, Noelia, yeah, that's not true. Like the modeling industry is becoming very inclusive. You absolutely could try. So yeah. I would like to try that. Um, and I think those are fun things I would like to kind of get more experience with while I am Miss USA, because I'll have the opportunities to do that. We have Fashion Week coming up. And then of course, other events in the future where I might be able to host like a pageant or maybe even a TV opportunity or something I I would love. Um, And then in the future, I would like to try and continue those things. I would love to go on like Dancing with the Stars one day. That would be really fun, like a bucket list thing for me. Um, but we'll see. I, I, I was always someone who liked to plan my life out like five, 10 years in advance. And if the last three years of my life have taught me anything, it's that like, you can have a plan, but life will just throw you curveball after curveball. And you just have to be ready to swing and hopefully hit. And, um, it's okay to kind of like redirect and, uh, not follow your plan to a T because, you know, you don't want to feel like you're losing control over your life. You kind of just have to let it be and go with the flow. And that's what I've been doing. And so I like to keep an open mind about the future. Um, so those are my interests, but I'm definitely open to other opportunities, even ones that I maybe know, maybe don't realize right now exist. Yeah, absolutely. Pivot, pivot, pivot. It yes. sounds like you've become <laughs> really good at doing that. And you never yeah. even know, someone listening to this podcast might be like, oh, I actually have an amazing opportunity for Noelia. Yeah. So I love that you have your mind open to things and you're not locked mm-hmm. into just one direction because that is what will set you up for so much success, being ready for whatever comes your way. So I'm very excited for you. Uh, we you. have questions from the audience and I just love that with this podcast, I am very intentional about having everyone be included. Like we're all doing this podcast together. So the people have questions for you. We going to be answering them today. Um, There's so many questions, but we're going to ask probably like four or five and to like keep it in our little time bucket. We'll try to keep all, this is like pageant prep now. Can you keep your answers under like a Yeah, exactly. Concise to the point. (laughs) Exactly. Multiple people's questions answered. Gotcha. Um, Okay, so this is from Julia, and she wants to know, what do you think was the difference 
that like let you win all the way up to Miss USA versus the years that you competed before. It's like you did well before, but what was there yeah. one little itsy bitsy change or adjustment that you made that you feel like took you to the next level? Mm. I think it had to do with like my, my mindset where, where my mental was at. And mm-hmm. then also I feel that I, you have to like know where you're competing. If that makes sense. I don't yeah. necessarily think that it had anything to do with me negatively or needing to improve necessarily. Mm-hmm. When I was at Alabama, I just think that there was another place that was better suited for me. So mm-hmm. know where you're competing. Like, do you align with with where you are and like what's going on in that area and like who is kind of involved, if that makes sense? Mm-hmm. Or do you need to try somewhere else? Like that was a pivot that I made. And I think that that did play a role in my success in in winning. Um, And then at the same time, I did really try to level up my styling. Um, Obviously, what you wear is not. Oh, my (laughs) God. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm I'm one of the people that believes it's, it's not always about like what you're wearing. You know, you always hear the saying it's not about the dress it's about the girl in the dress and i do believe that um you know fashion in and of itself is not going to be the only thing that gets you to win but it definitely can help and show whoever you're competing for especially the judging panel that like you have this you know this fashion sense that's fun and we're seeing now even like in non-pageant settings that high fashion is kind of like peeking in to everyday life. And um, I think that you want to set yourself apart in that sense. So going into the pageant with a strong mindset is really important. Having sayings or Bible verses or whatever that you can quickly reference to like snap you back to reality if you start to like compare yourself to people. And then Mm -hmm. also um, finding things about yourself that you can really like highlight. Yeah. Awesome. Stuff and I love it. Okay. And that also answered like so many other questions because people oh. are saying, like, what is your advice for someone who wants to compete? Like that uh-huh. is advice right there. You're answering totally. multiple questions with that one answer. Yeah. Um, this is a fun one where I think we could kind of be like, zoom out. If you could do it all over again, what would you do? So this is from Millie. I think this is Millie. It's, you know, it's hard when it's all just lots of letters. Yeah. Letters. Okay, it's Millie or Millie's, um, but it says, do you think it would have been better to compete at Miss Universe at the end of your reign or shortly after you won? Like you won and then shortly after you had to go straight to Miss Universe. If you could zoom out and have it any way you wanted, would you would prefer to have more time to prepare or the way that you did it? No, I would have wanted it at the end of my reign, 100%. I, yeah. um, I won Miss Utah USA in July and then mm-hmm. I had Miss USA in September and then Miss Universe literally like the following month. So wow. that was kind of a lot, you know, of time where I didn't really have a break. And, mm-hmm. you know, I feel that there's a bit in society of this like toxic um, ideal that, you know, women, we like, we just keep going, we keep pushing, 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 pushing. And it's like, okay, yeah. yes, like we're strong. We can do a lot of things. We, we can multitask. Like, you know, we are capable, but at the same yeah. time, like, we're also human. We're not robots, you know? <laughs> and it's yeah. not like I can just plug myself into a wall and then feel completely recharged. It's, um, mm-hmm. there's a lot that's going on. And I didn't feel Like I had as much time as I wanted to, especially to like curate my wardrobe. Um, That was kind of tough. And I know you, you, but you look incredible. Just so you know, I was. Thank you. I was ready for a back to back. I was like, we're about to have. Oh, thank you so much. No, I I, I'm so grateful, um, especially to Sherry Hill, who sent me like a giant box with so Mm -hmm. many different outfits that I could wear while I was in El Salvador. Because honestly, without that, I I would have had a hard time because we didn't get our schedule for what we were doing every single day, literally until we got to El Salvador. So I have to kind of hope that like you have enough and you have, you know, clothing that's right for whatever occasion, because there's so many contestants there that they like split up girls into random groups every day. And one day, you know, one group was going to Uh, the presidential palace and another group is going to the beach. So like you have to have clothing for all different, you know, 
occasions and, and excursions. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's hard to plan for when you don't have the schedule and you're not given like a packing list either. So, right. um, you know, I, I do wish sometimes that I had had more time, but again, like I go back to my fundamental belief that things happen for a reason. And, um, in my, my Miss Universe experience was really, really fun. You are, and will always be like a phenomenal Miss USA. You oh, so laid you. at Miss Universe. I know we are all so proud of you. <laughs> Every single person like in America that was cheering for you, oh. like we are in Venezuela and all the other countries that were fans mm -hmm. of you. Like we were so impressed by Thank your performance, you. the way you carry yourself. You have this like joy and light and it just shines from the inside out. So you are oh. absolutely incredible. Thanks. And even with all of that, like, I wish we could sit here and talk for another no. hour, but we'll have to do another podcast. Yes. And because I have so many other questions that were submitted. Mm -hmm. Maybe when this is released, we can do like an Instagram live for 20 minutes and just like yes. pop on and answer some more questions. So everybody feels like they get to be pulled in. So if you guys are listening to this podcast now, make sure to look out for the Instagram live. We'll probably do it like one day after this podcast goes live. So we can do, we can get all of the people's questions answered because you are phenomenal and they want to hear from you. So thank you so much for your time, Noelia. Where can everybody find you on social media? Well, you can find me at Miss USA on Instagram, at Noelia Voigt on Instagram and um, at Noelia Voigt on TikTok as well. Lovely. Okay. Well, I can't wait to continue to follow your journey on Instagram and see all that you're going to do as Miss USA. We will talk to you very, very soon. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Have a wonderful you. night. Peace. Thanks. Bye. You. Thank you so much, you guys, for hanging out with myself and Noelia, our amazing current Miss USA. Make sure you follow her on Instagram. Also, follow this podcast, holdmycrown.podcast. And when it comes to the podcast world, follow, like, subscribe, all of the things. Make sure you share. And I will see you next week. Say hi. Hi. I want to say hold my crown. Hold my crown. Can you say in the microphone, hold my crown. Oh my god. Say see you next week. See you next week. Yay Networks.